Hello, Internet! My name is Catherine Barsanistas, and you are watching The Gluttonous Geek. A cook, uh, The Gluttonous Geek presents Munchies and Minis, a cooking show where I make recipes inspired by various tabletop role-playing games, and maybe possibly start painting a mini. Uh, we're not doing any painting this week, and obviously we are a couple days late, but, you know, that's okay. It's been... A historic week, I would like to say, um, and I am probably feeling lighter and happier than I have in the past four years, so woohoo to that. Um, anyway, uh, tonight's recipe, we are going from Dungeons & Dragons to the game Pugmire, a uh, role-playing game where it's kind of like, you know, Dungeons & Dragons, but with dogs. Um, to really explain how this game is, it is... It takes place in a post-apocalyptic setting on Earth, where humans are gone. However, over the centuries and, well, possibly, I guess, millennia, various domestic animals and other animals have evolved to be bipedal with a human-like sense of intelligence. Um, I already did a recipe here on Munchies and Minis prior uh, for the game Pogmire, a Hunter's Haven hot pot, a carrot and smoked turkey based stew which you can share with your dog uh, this episode we are going to Pugmire's expansion book The Monarchies of Mao where um, as you may possibly have guessed we've gone to the dogs let's include the cats too so yes it is an expansion pack where you can play as a fantasy uh, medieval fantasy version of your cat as a hero. And I'm a cat lover, so I thought it would be fun to make something that you can play as a cat in your tabletop role-playing game or share with your cat in, you know, small doses. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Take some water and hopefully not lose my voice because, oh my goodness, it's been a week. Um, and that is a good week that today is November 8th of 2020 on a Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for joining me. Um, so when I was going through the Pogmire source book, unlike, I want to say, um, the Pogmire source book, I didn't see that much really talked about as taverns um, or really anything beyond um, various tea houses. Because the two main food items I, I actually saw in the entirety of the book were one, catnip tea, and two, bowls of milk. And okay, while I could show a thing of catnip tea or a thing of milk, why? I don't need to give you more than like five minute instructions on that and, less, and probably less than that at that. So I thought, why not combine them together into a recipe that is inspired off a medieval European recipe, and that is what I'm doing today. We are making a milk rice pudding based off of Blanc Manche, which is a medieval kind of milk pudding. So it used to be considered a savory pudding uh, using uh, diced chicken as well as milk and rice. However, it's evolved in our society I want to say over the centuries into more of a dessert where it is kind of a sticky rice pudding with um, that's milk based. Um, the thing is, I was kind of like looking at uh, all the what's it called the source material with Monarchies of Mao, and an interesting thing I found is at first, and this is also the reason why I didn't do this recipe for so long. Hi, buddy. Speaking of kitties, come here, Moosey. Come here, buddy. Meow. Come here. You want to say hi to my followers? Come here, buddy. And he said, Moose. This is Moosey. He is my second oldest cat. He's, I think, about 15 years old. He came with the house. He was my husband's late grandparents' kitty. And he's an absolute sweetie, aren't you, baby? Yes, you are. I love you so much. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, at first thought that the rest of the monarchies of Mao were Asian based, like based off of Imperial China with the various uh, different regions based off of various families uh, and dynasties, but that doesn't actually look to be the case. When I was doing a little bit more research into the cat empire, <laughs> the, um, the various monarchies of Mao, it closer resembled that of Charlemagne's reign, right, of the Holy Roman Empire, um, 
which is basically medieval Renaissance Germany. Um, but not only Germany, I want to say part of France and also part of Italy. An interesting event about, about that particular fact is that there is a kind of a version of Blancmange um, in each one of those countries. It's evolved from that recipe. Uh, it's kind of a sweet rice milk pudding that's based off of Blancmange, specifically in the Holy Roman Empire. So I'm going, heck yes, let's work with that. So we're going to be making a milk rice pudding um, with catnip. <laughs> okay, so I know, it's crazy. Catnip. You would think, oh, well, that sounds actually kind of gross. But interesting thing about catnip, um, it actually, as a tea, has a very similar scent to mint with a little bit of an herbal... Um, I want to say almost kind of oregano thyme sort of take on it. I mean, the best thing to describe it as is pennyroyal, but you're not likely to find pennyroyal. You're more likely to find catnip, and catnip, especially if it's organic and doesn't have any additives, um, works well for humans as it does for cats as a calming factor. Now, granted, I don't highly recommend that um, while pregnant women ingest any catnip tea, uh, especially in large quantities um, just you know as a disclaimer here but it does have a very calming effect on humans as well that works well for anxiety now what we're going to be making is would have be the amount of tea that you would need for um, about four cups of tea uh, well for a quart of tea um, though we're only get it's going to be a very concentrated water mix because we're going to be mixing milk and cream to make up for that water portion so we can still keep the fat content right. So um, this particular catnip I got from one of those specialty pet stores. It's organic, it's from the field. It's the stuff you usually find on Chewy.com. And yes, this is about, well, it's a big fat tub and it comes with a catnip toy, um, which I still haven't dug out of there yet because I know as soon as I do, it's just gonna get catnip all over the place. So. No, we're not going to deal with that. So the first part of this whole step is that we need to make our catnip tea portion. So what you are going to need, once I read my own darn instructions, you're going to uh, want to get this catnip into a tea ball of some sort. And let's not use that cheap steeper. Let's use one of my fancy mesh tea balls that I got from Dryad Pottery, Dryad Tea. And you're going to need about two tablespoons and two teaspoons of organic catnip. So I'm just going to take a tablespoon and a teaspoon measuring spoon and we're just going to use two because I'm not going to be able to fit that much into one tea ball. I'm actually going to need two tea balls for that which I I do have. So here we go. And this is actually, I mean, you'll get enough to get the flavor in this, but it's not enough to be crazy, even though it looks like it's so. I mean, you're essentially working with a quart equivalent of milk for this. And this should serve, oh god, I want to say like roughly, um, do about tablespoon and teaspoon in each tea ball of that organic catnip. It's going to cook down quite a bit and thicken up. So there's one. And then there is a tablespoon and a teaspoon of organic catnip. Now, granted, if you don't want to use catnip, that is perfectly fine. Uh, you can use dried mint or mint tea as well. So, we've got our tea balls ready to go. Then I need to bring about a cup of water to a boil to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, granted, yes, you can just put a, uh, I want to say, what's it called? brain. My brain is not working. Uh, you could put a saucepan on the stovetop with about 
I want to say a cup of water, a bit more than that. I mean, air on the side of caution, go with a little bit more, maybe up to about a quarter cup of water in addition to that. Um, you can bring it up to a boil on your stove top. I just like to use this particular kettle because it shows me the temperature on the side right here. Now bring it to about a boil, like a rolling well, I wouldn't say full-on rolling boil, but about there should be enough on your stovetop, but we're going to do it this way instead while I gather my other ingredients. And just like with all herbal teas, you want to bring it to about 200, and 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you need a thermometer for this? No, not really. But... This takes some time and energy off of me, so I don't have to watch a pot. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and um, put, like, bring together my other ingredients that we're going to go together, and I will tell you why they go together. So, first I'm just going to get a saucepan, and a stupidly large one at that. I might need to actually get a pot. We'll use this one. Okay. So now this is for the other part of the liquid portion of our pudding. You are going to need um, whole milk. You are going to need cream, uh, heavy cream. Honey and kosher salt for this portion. So first, I'm just gonna go ahead and add the rice because I happen to have that already measured in a measuring cup. You're gonna want a cup of short or medium grain rice, or uh, it's also labeled as sushi rice, though medium grain tends to be a little less, less, less expensive. Uh, a little less expensive. I can talk, I can speak good. So we've got the rice in there. Next, I'm going to be adding about, uh, two cups of whole milk. And there's one. And there's two. To that, I'm going to be adding a cup of heavy cream. And this is going to make up for the water portion of it to make sure that we have enough fat in our milk pudding. And I'm just going to give that a rinse because we're going to use the same measuring cup for our tea. Okay. And granted, yes, milk is one of those items that you should be only giving to your cat sparingly. But for the sake of the recipe, and also, you know, for the sake of your players, let's just assume, assume that you're not feeding a cat, you're feeding humans. Of course, once this is all done, I am going to be feeding a small little portion to my cat, Ginger, because she'll eat anything, and um, she's lived this long in this world so far. I'm kidding. She's about 21 years old, and she will eat anything you put in front of her. That's why you really need to be careful. Like, she will stick her whole head in your mug of whatever drink you have, unless it smells of onions or citrus. Or coffee. She doesn't like... If it's acidic, she will not try to eat it. However, um... That's to... Oh, right. I also need to be adding honey about a quarter cup of honey. Now, easy way to get, like I know pouring honey can be a pain in the butt, especially if you're trying to put it in something. And I know that honey tends to go slowly out of measuring cups. So here is a little trick to evacuate itself from the, the measuring cup you're working with. You'll just spray the inside of your measuring cup, a little bit of cooking spray, I'm not too worried about this adding to the milk pudding because really it's just aerosolized canola oil. It's fine. So, once I find where the heck my honey walked off to, because it done walked off. Why did my honey 
walk off. Where is my honey? Ah! It walked off into the cupboard, even though I specifically put it on the countertop. So it wouldn't walk off. But, you know... I need to be better at communicating. So we're just going to fill up about a quarter cup, measuring cup, of clover honey. Hi, Chiptune Baroni, it's good to see you. Welcome back to the show. Just a quarter cup of honey to that. And it's not quite enough. And see how it just gets right out of there with that cooking oil that we used earlier. Oh, nice! Playlist for Mama Dog's meatloaf recipe. Yeah, mine's uh, mine's in the works too. Mm. And to the mix, I'm gonna add a pinch of kosher salt. That's actually sea salt currently in my thing, which I totally forgot about. It'll be fine. There's enough sweetness to work with that. Okay, so now I continue to wait as my kettle continues to heat up to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So I don't, I'm just going to put the honey to the side here. As I try to figure out what the heck I'm going to cook this week. Now, um, I will, let's see, I decided temporarily to get off your Patreon because it's a special occasion. Totally fine. Um, you already know that, uh, when you come back, you'll still have access to the recipes you missed. So, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, goodness, meow. Moosey has returned and he wants to say hello again. Meow. Hey, buddy. Come here, my love. Come here! And say hi to my followers again? Yeah, it's a moosey bear. Hi, moosey bear. Yeah. Hello. How are you? <laughs> okay, okay, buddy. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Someone got caught in my apron. There we go. Alright, so the water is now done boiling. So... So yeah, we're just going to pour in a little bit more than a cup of water. I'm just going to like go to that line there and then go above it like about, uh, about a, no more than a half an inch. And those two steepers that I've got right here, yeah, that's just going to go right in, put the chains through that spout there, and then I... I'm going to cover that measuring cup to allow it to steep fully. So I'm just going to do that with one, a saucer that's large enough to handle it, and two, I'm just going to weigh that down, and this is completely not necessary, with my tea pet here. This His name is Rooibos. And then find a trivet that actually is a full-size trivet so it doesn't tip over on me. There we go. There we go. Now that's all stable. Cool. So now I just need to set a timer for about 15 minutes to steep uh, fully while I wait. Hmm. Didn't completely think this through. So in that case, uh, I think I'm going to try to do a little bit of an experiment. As I wait, um, well, I am, but I'm not. So, because I realized to do that experiment, I also need a fully brewed cup of uh, catnip tea as well. So, back to the measuring cups, back to my organic catnip, and back to getting another tea steeper because I realized that a lot of this um, recipe is actually a bit of waiting which is kind of a pain in the butt but you know you do what you do where is 
is that teaspoon measuring cup that I just had here. It is here. I know that it is here. Haha! -ha, here it is. I should dry that off so it doesn't stick to the catnip and possibly make it mold. Alright, so to make a... See, there's a Build-A-Cat from Bloom County. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, once again, organic catnip. Make sure it's labeled organic. Make sure there's no additives. This is the premium stuff that was cut before it started to go dry already. So a standard 8-ounce cup of catnip tea you'll want, especially if you want to have any kind of flavor to it, two teaspoons of organic catnip in your tea bowl. Then, I'm just going to pour, let's make sure that we're at the right temp here, a 200 degree Fahrenheit water. Are we already at that? see what we're at right now. 195. I'm just going to wait that, for that to reach another 5 degrees. This catnip brand has built a cat on... Oh! Did not know that. Oh, the, from the field? Yeah, that's, uh... Apparently there's a surprise toy inside, but I don't want to open that yet. Um, otherwise, it's just going to fly everywhere. Okay, so... Just while I'm at it. Okay, Moose, do you want some catnip? Is that it, buddy? Are you gonna trip me up because I put catnip down? Moses? He's already lost, uh, <laughs> he's already lost interest. Okay. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I completely forgot about um, Build a Cat. <laughs> Craziness. Um, we are almost at 200 degrees, about one degree away. While I wait and wait and wait. But, you know, in the meantime, we're going to go over some of the other stuff that's going to be included with this pudding. Got that. Let's go for about a little over eight ounces. Okay. And this is, like, I'm going to try to make a cocktail based off of catnip tea. I mean, that you obviously can't give your cat because alcohol can kill your cat. Please don't kill your cat. Um, however, you know, sometimes it's nice to have a little drink to go along with what you're eating. Uh, in the meantime, let's assemble the ingredients that are going to go on top of our pudding. Once again, we're going to go, try to go for the cat safe. So we've got some fresh blueberries here. Cats love them. They are actually good for them. And, you know, sparing amounts, because considering that one of this, these is, well, two of these is like a mouthful for a domestic cat. So, don't overfeed your cat. Next, we're going to be using some prosciutto. Cured meat is uh, very, very indicative, uh, very common to the Holy Roman Empire's cuisine. Um, mostly pork and everything, but also in the same era of Northern Italy, which was part of the Holy Roman Empire. So we are going to be using some shredded prosciutto on top of our pudding to go along with the sweetness and add a little bit of savoriness that cats love. And finally, one you may not think of at all, and we're not going to use all of it, trust me, uh, cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is not only good for cats, they actually kind of like it. And, um, I figure, you know, considering in a post-apocalyptic world and, you know, we still have various um, vegetables and fruits from our era growing at that point, it would make sense to have a little bit of that. And also prosciutto and cantaloupe are wonderful together and very, very um, common, well, it's common as an appetizer or a dessert in Italian cuisine. So that's what we're doing as I snack on some blueberries. Well, I'll wait. Let's go ahead and make some of this bite-sized to go as a topping for our rice pudding. So, I'm just going to grab two dishes here, kind of act as collection dishes. And we're just going to do a little bit of cutting and dicing. It's like Publix, my family and I used to go to the store, we were in Towsie. Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah, uh, I'm in the Atlanta area, and Publix is very, very prevalent in the Florida and Georgia area. So, 
yeah. Uh, and believe it or not, I actually won third place, or was it honorable mention in a recipe contest done by Publix. Uh, I made a toasted ra like a pan-fried ravioli with goat cheese and blueberries, and I can't remember what else I added to it. It's a while ago. I'll, uh... <clears throat> <clears throat> best friends living in right now Atlanta, Georgia yeah um, I am in the Atlanta area which is comprised of several counties I'm kind of in the uh, northern Atlanta area so I'm just kind of slicing the rind off of this cantaloupe right here And I'm just gonna start cutting some strips. I'm working with this as a serving bowl. I kind of want to make sure that I can arrange this well enough. And I think I might need to do a little bit more. To class it up a little bit. This is going to be kind of an experiment tonight, actually, to figure out what kind of shapes and knife cuts are good for a garnish on this. Now, granted, you're usually eating with a spoon, so you might want to actually go smaller, but that's okay. We'll do some with some long strips, and we'll do some cutting with some dicing. So we got some long strips here. And let's do another strip right here. Just gonna remove the rind. There we go. So let's see. Uh, see if I can do a little bit of strips like so, kind of more of thick ribbons instead. Do that a bit with this one. Finally, with this last bit, I'm going to do a bit of dicing. So, I'm just going to get those to about half inch thick strips and then half inch thick cubes. A dice, so to speak. See how we doing that time? We got about five minutes left. All right, cool. So, just gonna fill one of those prep dishes. Hmm. One section with the dice. One section with the strips and one section with the ribbons. Let's go ahead and toss that. 
and since I have so much melon left over, I think I'm going to go ahead and prep it for some other things for this week, like for smoothies or for um, kind of a side dish. So some of this we're going to kind of chop up into freezeable chunks. I might just do that with the rest of it, actually. As you know, waste not, want not. And melon is good for smoothies. Hello, Caker Pie 44 Nice to see you on the stream. Today I am making some medieval-style milk pudding based, well, some milk pudding and rice pudding based off of the medieval recipe blanc manche, which means in French, um, white dish. But I am basing it off of the tabletop role-playing game, Mon uh, Pugmire, specifically their Monarchies of Mao expansion that has, you know, it's kind of like, if you ever heard of Dungeons and Doggos, it's like that, but with cats. And they're bipedal, and they have human-like intelligence, so... Let's see here. And I'm just cutting up what's left of this melon here, so... I don't have it go bad in my fridge. In fact, what I might do with the remainder of... Actually, maybe I'll make kind of a smoothie-based cocktail. That could be interesting, right? With that extra catnip tea I just made up. I mean, is it medieval? No, not in, not in the slightest. But, you know, sometimes you have leftover ingredients and you just kind of want to use them for something tasty. So, got that, got that. I will admit, this is actually kind of the advantage of coming on actually watching the video, because sometimes I'll do an experiment that won't ever make it into a recipe card format. But you can still kind of learn how to play with it yourself. So. Cubed cantaloupe. All right. Oof, just toss that. Forty five seconds left on the first back on the T anyway, because that means that gives us a chance to uh what's it? Move on to the next recipe. Oof. Well I figure out what I do next with that. Let's see. You could make a fruit salad, I know, but fruit salads are boring. I mean, I've got that, and I've got blueberries, and I do have milk and um, catnip tea I was going to make as a cocktail, but, you know, kind of a cocktail smoothie could be really tasty, especially if I add some gin. Let's see. You're almost a Jill sandwich. Okay. Oh, right. Let's see here. So, stove top, we've got, well, let's move back to our prep cam here. Some Resident Evil. Oh, God. Yeah, I still haven't, uh, still not have played that game. Oh, so, you see here, we've got our brewed catnip tea, which I'm just gonna christen, uh, christen the remainder onto my tea pet's head, and I'm sure I'm going to have my cats go absolutely crazy. You see, it smells like kind of a mix of Lipton's and, um, well, green tea and mint tea, and that's actually a little bit how it tastes. So let's go ahead and move to our stove cam where we have our milk, cream, honey, rice, and salt waiting. And I just need two. Oof. Yeah, pour that in there. 
And then, bring to a boil over medium heat. Yeah. Oof. So, I'm just gonna stir that all in. Because right now it's kind of a settled mess where the, as you see, the honey is combined with the rice. Give that a stir, and another stir, and a million stirs until I dislodge all the honey from the bottom of that pan. I'm just going to reduce the heat some. Okay, cool. And we should be a I think we've got a few more minutes left on the catnip tea we've got right there. Okay, so next up as far as prep, I've got prosciutto here. Which... I'm gonna shred up some. And try not to eat all of it on my own before I even... Okay. Once again, this is going to kind of be sort of a... See what I can do shape-wise to make it look interesting. That is too thick. Let's go ahead and slice that down the center to make ribbons. gonna kind of arrange it to sort of rosettes. I mean, I'm playing with this too to see if I can do presentation-wise. And this is kind of an experiment. <laughs> Meow! Moosey has joined us again, and he is singing the song of his people. It's kind of a rosette. Meows! Meows. What is it, buddy? You want to say hi again, or you smell the catnip? Probably a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. Oh, man. Let's see. Now I'm just playing with it. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's uh, do a bit of slicing. Slice it a little thinner. like one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. Mm. Someone should ask, did you rather have cake or pie? And the grouchy cat would answer, I'd rather die. Okay. That was grumpy cat. Okay. I haven't seen Grumpy Cat and stuff in a while. Eh. Just gonna... Wrap some melon in prosciutto. See what it's all about. Okay. That tastes amazing. Mmm. Yeah, I can see why it's a common dessert. Mmm. Hmm. Heck yeah. Okay. Still waiting on the milk to come to a boil. All right. 
right. Hi, hi again, Moosey. How are you doing, buddy? Would you like a bit of melon with prosciutto? Yeah? Oh no, I remember Gr Grumpy Cat. She's like if my Schrodinger had a Persian face. I think her name was Tartar Sauce. No, that was, um... No, I think her name was Tartar Sauce. I can't remember. Okay. Moosey Bear, would you like some prosciutto and melon? Yeah? Just gonna cut a little bit for my fur one of my fur sons here. I should probably cut that a little bit more because then he'll try to inhale the darn thing at once and end up choking on it and throwing up. Other cat parents know exactly what I'm talking about. There we go. Hi, Moosey Bear. Moomus. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, good, nice. Shoulder cat. Hi, shoulder cat. Wrong camera. Here we are. Hey, buddy. Want something nice to eat? Does that smell tasty? Would you like it? <laughs> That's my buddy. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll let you eat on the floor. Oh, 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 there you go. Mooses, there you go, buddy. Oh, goodness. Yes, I am that weirdo. All right. Yeah, he loves it. He is just noshing down on it right now. Mmm. Okay. Or rather, he'll eat all of the prosciutto wrapped around it. And then leave the melon on the floor. Well, I'm pretty sure Ginger would eat the whole thing if I was giving it to her. So that's just gonna go right in the trash. Okay, let's switch back to our stove cam to see how our milk pudding is doing. It's getting there. It's getting to a boil, I would say. Almost. Man. Just making sure we're aimed right here. Whew. Right, as I eat more prosciutto and melon because it tastes good. Um. Oh my gosh. Okay. So. Mmm. Our uh, tea should be ready. So, yeah, to figure out what to do with it while we wait for stuff to boil. Other than, you know, eating more and more of my ingredients before I serve this. Mmm. Dang it, that's tasty. Okay, so. Hmm. Oh, are we at a boil yet? What are you try planning to make for next time, lunches and minis, and as a, spe and as a special occasion? Oh gosh. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's kind of up in the air right now. Um, I still have the Volos guides to look through, and I recently got a hold of a lot of uh, Pathfinders, um, what's it called, uh, source books to work with that, but I've been holding off on that for some other reasons. Um, goodness. But, uh, yeah. Um, I was gonna, for um, the blog, 
try to make a recipe based off of the Disney's um, Beauty and the Beast, where you know the song "Be Our Guest." They have a um, list of <laughs> dishes like um, beef ragu and cheese souffle. Well, uh, I was going to uh, make a beef ragu, which is stew, a beef stew served in cheese souffle, which I've been trying to do for years now, but I finally figured out how to do it by kind of making a cheesy based Yorkshire pudding to serve beef stew in. So I need to put that together. Um, beyond that, God, what else do I have on the list? Um, Yes, I did read the Heroes Feast cookbook. I uh, I did purchase it um, and going through it. Um, actually, I did release a Dragonlance-based recipe on the Patreon a few days ago for Otic Spice Potatoes, which are finger bling potatoes that have been uh, cooked in butter and tossed in kind of a mixture of um, a native, kind of a Native American-style spice, spice blend using ground sumac. Oh, I am boiling. Right, so let's switch the um, stove top. Ground sumac mustard powder. Okay, so that is definitely boiling. So we are going to reduce the heat on here to about. Do, 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 um, I didn't think I actually wrote it down. To about kind of medium low or low, just to simmer. And I'm going to set the timer here for about 30 minutes. Which I'll have to come back and stir often as it simmers, but it should thicken up nicely while it goes. And that's a little bit of milk skin that's just popped off of there. But uh, yeah, that's the plan for one of the dishes I'm going to be doing. The other, I've been kind of uh, doing a bit more reading lately. Um, and I was going to, actually I'll just keep that on there so I can keep an eye on it. Um, I was going to do a recipe based off of Pathfinder Kingmaker at one point soon. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff I'm reading lately. Uh, I just managed to um, get my hands on... Oh, yeah, I was going to read through Good Omens to see if there was anything listed that I can make a recipe for. Um, but yeah, part of it, as I want to say this week, has been kind of, um, well, it's been a lot of doom scrolling until, I want to say, yesterday, well, two days ago, when the election ended up the way it did. So, last night, we, um, we had a social distant gathering with friends to celebrate, um, well, Basically, see you later, Chip Doom Brony. Uh, to basically not feel like we're no longer at the end of the world, and that's that's a great feeling to have, isn't it? Um, ooh. Okay, good. We're still uh, still bubbling away there. Um, just gonna give that another couple of stirs. Oof. It does smell really good, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but yeah, other stuff coming up. Oh gosh. Like, um... Hmm. Let's see. Whew! <laughs> this means I need to be playing more video games recently. Um, and reading more books. Actually, I would like to do another Dresden Files recipe soon, before too long. Um, just to be able to... Well, I've only done one Dresden Files recipe this this year, and it was for a summer lemonade made with fresh thyme and um, watermelon, frozen watermelon as ice cubes. Okay, speaking of drinks, though, I've got uh, some catnip tea that I'm still trying to figure out what to do with. I mean, I might just make myself um, kind of a smoothie. I've got melon, I've got uh, cantaloupe here, and I've got blueberries that I can play around with. And I've got plenty of milk and cream, so that would make a good smoothie base as well. Um, and I've got ice, so that can also work. 
as we continue to let this simmer and thicken. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's make a smoothie. I need to clean my blender attachment. Let's make a smoothie after I clean my be uh, blender attachment. So this is not really so much a thematic recipe at this point than it is something to use with the leftover ingredients from said thematic recipe. And I would probably freeze the melon instead of using ice cubes. Though I have some frozen watermelon that I can use in the big freezer. Maybe I can do that. Oh, I really need to clean out this attachment. Oh, goodness. Let's see what other stuff I've been into lately. Hum, hmm. What am I reading? <laughs> oh, right! Yes, I was actually working on reading uh, the first Bridgerton novel, which is a Regency-era romance novel series that is being made into a web series, like a, not a web series, a TV series for net on Netflix that looks pretty interesting. And I did find a couple food items in the book so far. I might do something from that. Let's see, releasing on the blog, I am currently working on writing the post to go along with my potatoes and, mental, and potatoes and molasses recipe from Open the Garden Hedge, which admittedly is taking a lot longer to write than I anticipated because there's so much symbolism and themes, and uh, deep themes and lessons in that show that I still want to be able to have it work with the recipe itself in the write-up. Okay, Whew. so I've got a... Oh, that is that is foaming up. Whew. I'll turn the heat down a little bit lower. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that is definitely thickening up nicely. Okay. Cool. So, smoothie, smoothie, smoothie. Um, melon, and blueberries, and catnip tea, and other things that I will figure out as we're going along. So, definitely gonna need one of those containers that go along with an immersion blender! Which I might have in here somewhere, provided I can see over my glasses. It might not be. Whew. Okay. New plan. I'm using another measuring cup. A larger one. Or are we? Oh, no, we'll just use that one to pour the tea into. I'm probably not going to need more than two cups. Go ahead and switch back to our thing. So, I'm just gonna add a handful of that chopped melon. I'm gonna add a handful of blueberries. Maybe even more than a handful. the stems off. And I've got an immersion blender right here. No wireless speaker I do not need you on right now. Okay, let's 
see if this works the way I want it to. See if I pour in some of this catnip tea. Okay. I'm just gonna give that a taste to see how it is. See what I need to add to it. Hmm. Bit of honey. Add a little bit of gin, which is somewhere around here. But first, gonna switch back and see how my milk pudding's doing. Whoa! Nice. Just a touch of gin. Maybe... A touch of heavy cream. And... Some ice cubes. Okay, I will take that. And maybe some more melon to thicken that up. Though ideally I'd probably have used yogurt, which I do not have right now. Ah! Ah! Just have it splash all over the place. Okay. Not the best idea in the world, admittedly. Ooh. Oof, right. Let's get that cleaned up and in a cup for myself. Oh, gosh. Tastes pretty decent. I just gotta clean all of that up. Let's see here, how is our pudding doing? Okay, looks like we're gonna give it a couple more stirs.
Okay, it's certainly coming along. And this might actually be a stupidly short episode of Munchies and Minis, but you know, that's okay. Sometimes shorter is better. I'm just going to switch to a spatula, too. There we go. Oof. Mm -hmm. Some of that and some water. Mm. Man. And I'm gonna keep slicing up bit more of that prosciutto. Curious to see if I can actually make rosettes with it. Back to our stovetop, see how we're doing. Oof. Hmm. Oh boy. Hmm. 
I might just add a touch more of catnip tea to that mixture. Thin it out a little bit. because I think this had some time for the rice to soak up some of the liquid already. So I'm just going to make up for the lost liquid by just thinning it out just a little bit. Especially since we've got about 10 minutes left to go on this. Oof, man. And what the heck, another slice of prosciutto. Just slice that and... Hmm, I wonder. might actually be ready. I think we are actually done a little bit early, so let's remove that from heat, turn off our stove top, switch back to our prep cam here. So I'm just going to grab a trivet. And a couple of bowls to serve this in. Now you probably don't need bowls as large as that to serve up for people. Probably that this this size should probably do it. However, uh, the large one I'm using for my what's it called photos. I know it's probably the best looking one for that, so that's why we're going to use it for that. And we're just going to scoop generous portions of this pudding. Let's smooth that out. And let it sit. I'm just gonna fill the other bowls before I start decorating.
Okay. So now, it's time to do a wee bit of decorating. So... See what I'm doing here. liking that look with the melon ribbons so I think I'm going to try to take that for this one There we go. So I'm trying to kind of create sort of a flower, the prosciutto and melon here, as well as the blueberries. That's nice. Okay. Well, there we go. Let's see, maybe one right there. Yes, that looks excellent. All right, that is ready to have a photo taken. I'm just going to make up a tiny little dish for my cat and see if she likes it. So... So I'm a weirdo like that. Just the tiniest little bit. Like that's probably even too much. Like that. Tiny bit of prosciutto. And 
and a blueberry. There we go. Cat portion. Anyway, I would love to thank you for thanking. Uh, I would love to thank you for joining uh, me tonight for Munchies and Minis. I know that it's definitely later in the week and really kind of on top of the new one. But uh, like we said, that's been an interesting week for all of us. So, um, right next week, I have no idea what I'm making. I'm gonna figure that out, and you will see. Um, in the meantime, I hope everyone's having about as a good good of a day as I am. Anyway, my name is Catherine Barsonistas, and you've been watching the, Glutton, uh, the Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis. Stay safe, stay sane, stay you. Have a great night. <laughs>